I bought this from eBay. It's a, well, I'll show you what it is. It came in a padded envelope with some bubble wrap and this is the extent of the packaging. Um, not a lot of bubble wrap. Hopefully it came with the back plate. I should have brought some scissors. Um, um, I kind of went through a little bit of a spending spree um, on eBay. And this is one of the things I bought. And there is a reason, which will hopefully come back to me soon. Okay, so there's no back plate and there's some rust here. This is a Gigabyte J GA-J1900N-D2PH and under here is the J1900 CPU and that is a low power quad core Intel CPU. And this is a mini ITX board and we've got a PCI slot here, 24 pin power and four pin CPU connector. It takes laptop memory. And what I thought I'd do with this, it's also got USB 3, HDMI out, VGA and the usual other connections. But what I thought I'd do with this is set up a low power system. And unfortunately it's only got two SATA connections. It would be more useful to me if it also had IDE, although I realize that's not realistic. But what I thought I'd do with this, assuming it works, um, is to set up a low power and potentially silent PC. Um, for example, if I'm testing memory, this can be running and not making noise. So, should we see if it actually works? Let me just grab some stuff. Put a 300 watt 80 plus power supply here. Should be fine. Okay, so I've connected a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, a power supply. It looks like it's switching on immediately when I switch the power switch on. I've got something on the screen and it looks like it's working. Um, it's got an EFI shell, um, which I'm not particularly familiar with, but maybe let's have a look in the BIOS. Okay, it's got a password on the BIOS. Let me see if there's a jumper over here that can clear the BIOS password. Okay, so there is a clear CMOS jumper here that I've tried and that hasn't actually made any difference. There's still a password to get into the BIOS. But let's see if I can actually boot from a USB stick because that may not be an issue not being able to get into the BIOS as long as I can boot from a USB stick. Um, I can't remember if the listing said anything about this. Um, okay, so we're able to get onto the USB. Um, I've clicked anti-X Linux, I think unless it's being a little bit odd. Um, it should let me pick one of these. I don't know why it's taking so long to draw them. I don't really know why it is acting in this manner. I can't really tell what's going on. It's so slow at updating this. I don't know why this doesn't work. Let's try a different um, USB stick. Zorin USB that will or should just boot into Zorin rather than give me a choice of various different Linux versions. But this 
<laughs> was supposed to just be a quick, let's try this board out. I'm sure it'll work. And Bob's your uncle. Try this out. See if it works. Use it for testing memory and then maybe see what else this would be useful for. This is looking much better actually. Okay, we're in Zorin. That didn't take very long at all. I did pause the video, but it was only about 15 seconds or something like that. And now I'm in Zorin 15.3. Um, this is Zorin 15.3 Lite, 64-bit. So um, let's have a look at this. So we've got a terminal loading. No, we don't. We've got terminal preferences. Uh, there's a terminal down here, isn't there? Nope. Terminal. So NeoFetch might be on here. No. Okay. Let's just run HTOP if it's here. Nope. Top. Okay. So we've got a fairly responsive looking system. Zorin runs well enough. Um, but I could really do with working out how to clear the BIOS password on this. Um, having a look around the BIOS and changing settings is useful. Um, okay, I've connected to the Wi-Fi. I oh, sudo apt install NeoFetch. Can now run NeoFetch and we have Intel Celeron J1904 cores at 2.4 gigahertz Intel HD graphics memory. 2 gig? Is that a 2 gig stick? I thought it was a 4 gig stick. Um, let me just check. Nope, yep, it is just a 2 gigabyte memory stick down here. Um, and we have a system that runs. Let's just have a quick look if it plays YouTube. Um, why not? Welcome to Firefox. Not sure what version this is. And we'll load this up. Full screen. Hey, um, I think I've done a video on a system with this processor before. I don't know if YouTube will find it. Um, but I think I used that system for a little bit of time, but not very long. No, I don't think I've done a recent video on it anyway. I think it can be useful to have a look at CPU benchmark to kind of compare the performance of different processors. This system is using about 12.6 watts at the moment. So this is really a very low power processor. And as you know, it's there's no fan on the heatsink. So it must not use a lot of power, it doesn't get hot and therefore they can use a passive heatsink. But um, yeah, nothing is happening right now. Okay, I have taken out the two gigabyte stick and put in a four gigabyte stick. And now it seems happier loading YouTube and loading this video where I've previously looked at an ASRock Q1900M system. I haven't got speakers plugged in, so you won't be able to hear anything, which is fine. Um, and it seems to be playing back video okay. Let's have a look at the stats. No, zero dropped, but we're only at 360 resolution. 
And this motherboard here has got a full size uh, memory slot. Whereas this one has got, uh, that we're currently using has got laptop RAM slots. This is AVC1 Kodak. Um, playback seems to be okay. Um, so yeah, I was getting random freezes with uh, just two gigabytes of memory. Now seems to be fine. So it might be a working system by the looks of things. I might be able to use this for some interesting things. It's currently using 18 watts at the moment. So the power usage has gone up. And the answer to this question is yes, in this system it worked. I haven't tried it in this one, but in this video that did work. So there we go. Um, we're getting quite a few dropped frames at the moment. Um, let's pause this and have a look at um, CPU benchmark and see how this processor compares. You can see general browsing speed is kind of okay. Not the fastest, but also I've only got a really small Wi-Fi dongle, so um, that may also be part of it. Okay, so I've got the Intel Celeron J1900 here, which is two gigahertz, turbo of 2.4 and four threads, 10 watts, and this came out in 2014, so this is old. CP Mark 1147. This is this Intel Celeron N3060, which is a dual core 1.6 gigahertz to 2.5, and that's got 665. That is in the HB Stream 11 that I've done a video on. And then this Intel Celeron N4020 is a dual core at 1.1 gigahertz with turbo up to 2.8 gigahertz, but it's got a much better score of 1549. Still, these are not fast processors or fast systems. And if we throw in a modern low power CPU, such as the Intel N100, you'll be able to see the difference. So here's the Intel N100. This is from 2023 and from 0 0.7 gigahertz up to 3.4 gigahertz and four threads. These are all six watt processors. Here's 5,467. And that's, you know, that's much quicker than these, but it's still not, you know, up there with modern high power processors. So yeah, we're really dealing with really slow systems here. This. Celeron J1900 is a slow processor, but it does have four cores and it does give me a, you know, working system that can watch YouTube and can browse the web. And um, it's much better now that I've got four gigabytes of RAM in it. But yeah, I ideally will want to partner this with a silent power supply if possible. So there we go, we have a working mini ITX system, smaller than my hand, sort of. Uh, passively cooled. I can put in some more memory, but this will be useful just for me to test laptop memory and maybe build a little janky little system, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, see what I can do with it. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, if you like sort of um, slow videos, not much happens really. I talk about computers. Um, uh, there is another channel I'll link below and it's got these sort of extra videos, these sort of slower, maybe some things that people aren't as interested in. Power supplies might be over there. Some of the random stuff as well, I might end up putting there. 
so go check that out in the description below thanks for watching and goodbye and this is webgl aquarium we're running at about 10 to 12 frames per second with 500 fish just so i'll show you sort of a rough guide of performance i wasn't really sure how to end this video so i thought i'd put this in a box <laughs> Um, it's sticking out the back and I've got an old version of Memtest running and it's now, I'm now easily able to test laptop RAM with this system, which was kind of the purpose anyway. So it is janky as you can see. I do not recommend this, but it does the job for now and I can finish this video with a result that I'm happy with because this was kind of part of the plan anyway. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching and see you in another video.